Welcome to our weekly meditation. In the days following the coronation of King Charles III, <clears throat> we'll make some link to that. We talked about, um, had two sessions with uh, Teresa of Avila and her watering of the garden. And a strong link there, I think, is that she often referred to Jesus, her Lord, as his majesty. Majesty, the King, but a very in a very personal way, and a link across to another medieval mystic, Julian of Norwich, whose well-known line "All will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things will be well." And as we can see on the screen, those words were at the bottom of the uh, covers that went around the King at the time. Or at the point in the service of his uh, being anointed. More on that later. So we come to this time that we've put aside. Taking a deep cleansing breath. And another. Breathing in deeply through the nose. and out through the mouth. Stilling ourselves, bringing our focus to where we're sitting, feeling our connection to the ground through the feet and to the chair through the bottom. And imagining that connection running up through the spine, out through the head and connecting us to creation all around us. If you want to close your eyes or to lower your gaze or to just use the image on the screen. Bring the focus back to the breath. Conscious of taking the in-breath. Conscious of what's an out-breath. Consciously breathing. Consciously breathing. Taking care of the breath. Nurturing it. It comes in from the air around us, enters us deep within, is transformed, the oxygen is removed, carbon dioxide is added back, and we release it. In, out, deep, slow, and we add a count to those breaths. Just internally counting to four on the in-breath. Holding for two. And five on the out-breath. And if there's any tensions that you're becoming aware of in this stillness, any aches, niggles, just notice them. 
almost give thanks for them, they're part of who we are. Maybe direct the breath to those parts. And if you're able to, maybe just noticing them, focus, tense a little bit there and try and relax out of them. I think this week marks a festival 650 years since the showings, as they're called, of Julian of Norwich. Julian, who made a significant contribution to English spirituality. I'm just taking some quotes from a, a new book. It's a novel actually called I, Julian, written by an academic who had cancer during the pandemic. She says, writing about the visions was like prayer, she says. I was going into this deep, deep place to allow myself to see, if I could, what she saw. Which is what she asks for us to do anyway. So it's a homage to her and her companionship through difficult times. She goes on, the, the author of this is Dr Gilbert. I learned, she said, that the 14th century is really not a million miles from the 21st century. People were facing the rolling waves of pestilence, poverty, social unrest, the peasants' revolt. There's the feeling of injustice and also the way that the church was behaving with Wycliffism and Lollardy beginning to rise up and how it was responding to that. And she says she finds echoes in today's culture wars. We're taking positions. We're cancelling people. I was really interested to see these resonances and that helped to bring Julian into our time. And I think we can often go even further back and we should try and do this, shouldn't we, when we're reading the Gospels and bringing those experiences and wisdoms of Jesus and others into our time. Claire Gilbert, the author, goes on. Pride, she says, is part of Julian's journey as it is of her own. We talk about the con first conversion being the enemy of the second. You think you've got it. You think you've arrived. You think you've achieved what you need to achieve and you're settled. But if your intent is for God, that's never going to be the case. on the intentional self-isolation that Julian undertook. Claire Gilbert says, well, I wanted to convey something which I think is a very modern issue and possibly an eternal issue for women, which is a room of your own, time on your own, to be left alone. They were important to Julian. 
you see her really not loving the householder's life at all and needing time to read and be by herself. What were the options available to women in the 14th century? She didn't want to be a householder. She didn't want to join a community. She thought about a lay community, but most of what they did was exhausting to her. And what she really loved to do was to read and study. Dr Gilbert goes on to say she hopes that she's shown that the focused, isolated life of prayer is full of incident. She's keen to convey the depth of the spiritual experience. You've got this character in a room, she says, who never goes anywhere for decades, but it's anything but boring. So with those thoughts of Julian brought perhaps into a modern perspective from a modern writer, that inner journey. Let's look at our inner self. Conscious. of our own thoughts conscious of our feelings but increasingly as we practice able to stand back and separate ourselves to be aware of them not to be owned by them not to be caught up not to be led along a train of thought able to come back to a still centre Becoming our own observer. We'll move to our time of silence with some modern words from a poet we've used before, Malcolm Geit, his reflections on Julian. Show me, O anchoress, your anchor hold, deep in the love of God, and hold me fast. Show me again in whose hands we are held, Speak to me from your window in the past. Tell me again the tale of love's compassion for all of us who fall onto the mire. How he is wounded with us, how his passion 
quickens the love that haunted our desire. Show me again the wonder of at one of Christ in us, distinct and yet the same, who makes and loves and keeps us in each moment and looks on us with pity, not with blame. Keep telling me, for all my faith may waver. Love is his meaning, only love for ever. We go into our silence with a Taise chant, Jesu le Christ. It's in French. The translation is Jesus Christ, inner light. Do not let my darkness speak to me. Jesus Christ, inner light. Enable me to welcome your love. Jesu le Christ, lumière intérieure, ne lasse pas les ténèbres me parler. Jesu le Christ, lumière intérieure, donnez-moi d'acculier ton amour.
And so coming out of silence. Gently opening our eyes if they've been closed. Taking another deep breath. And closing with a prayer of Julian of Norwich. In you, Father Almighty, we have our preservation and our bliss. In you, Christ, we have our restoring and our saving. You are our mother, brother and saviour. In you, our Lord, the Holy Spirit, is marvellous and plenteous grace. You are our clothing. For love you wrap us and embrace us. You are our maker, our lover, our keeper. Teach us to believe that by your grace all shall be well, and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. Amen.